third and last story of this block before we all take a break. Yes, great. Um, super happy to introduce this man, by the way. Everybody else, feminists, women, don't worry. There's women in the line of this well, including myself. Um, so he's got a wonderful new night here that I'd like to plug a little bit. It's called Mezzanine. Um, and it started last season, and it's going to continue running this season. And Mezzanine is special because um, instead of having this setup of the one performer and all of you um, staring my way, um, it's all of us sitting collectively, and Chidi creates a very nice organic flowing situation where he asks questions and incites stories from the audience member. He actually motivates you to become a storyteller in live time, but in many different ways. Um, and what that exactly means, I'll let you find out, but I super encourage you guys to check out this night because I love it. Having said that, please welcome to the stage, Chibi. Hello, hello. Um, did you all know, this is, this is a great fact, you are all very, very lucky today. All, everybody here is really, really lucky. And I'll tell you the reason you're lucky. The, luck, the reason you're lucky is because tonight you will finally get the answer to that question that has been bouncing around your head for the last couple of years. Now, I know there have been other questions, right, bouncing around, but I'm talking of that question, the one that bounced higher more elegantly and with more passion than all the other questions. And that question, for those of you who have forgotten, is why don't antelopes play Scrabble anymore? <laughs> now, from the little noise here and there, I see a number of you have been struggling with this question over the years. <laughs> don't worry, because tonight you'll get an answer. you get an answer. Um, and I have to tell you, it began a couple of years ago. I was on one of those do-it-yourself do uh, safari solo day trips in Kenya. And I had everything I needed for a day trip in safari. So I had two and a half liters of water here. I had two and a half liters of water here. <laughs> I had one handheld garden fork, three <laughs> jars of high quality coconut oil, and of course, one brand new, still sealed game of Scrabble. <laughs> and so now I am, you know, strolling around in the wilderness, and I come across these elephants. Now, see, I live in Amsterdam, and you don't generally see elephants as you're moving around. So of course I stopped, we had this conversation, it was absolutely amazing, because the elephants were telling me about this new sort of curiosity-based educational program they were developing for their children. And it was just incredible discussion. But I had to go, so I said, hey, bye. And I'm sort of going on, and I'm walking. And a little later on, I get to this really grumbly rhinoceros. And the rhinoceros is so annoyed because he can't get the face ID on its iPhone to work. <laughs> and he says, can you help me? I said, no, I, I use carrier pigeon, which is not true. I don't use carrier pigeon, but I just said it to mess with the uh, rhinoceros. And uh, they're very gullible, but just, if, just so you know, they believe anything. Just tell them anything they believe. So anyway, so there's the rhinoceros, and uh, by good luck. And I'm walking along, and then I come to some antelopes, right? And they are so typical, because the minute the antelopes discovered that I wasn't a lion, I wasn't a cheetah, I wasn't a leopard, I wasn't a gang of hyenas, I wasn't a raving buffalo, or holding a rifle, they immediately got attitude. And you know what happens when... <laughs> no, yeah, laugh. I was like, when antelopes get attitude, what do they do? They give you the eye. And they all look at me like this. <laughs> Some of them were, you know, bouncing left and right, give me the eye. And I thought, okay. They forgot that it was me. Okay, it was me. I was prepared. So what did I do? Reach into my backpack, bring out the brand new game of Scrabble, and wave it up in the air like this. And their attitude evaporated like pixie dust. It was just gone. And they all began to run towards me. And as you all know, antelopes, when they talk, have very high voices. And of course, they can't say the letter R. So they're all coming, seeing this Scrabble, and they're all saying, Scrabble, 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 Scrabble. And they're all shouting, Scrabble, Scrabble. And, and they're shouting, Scrabble, Scrabble. And I'm saying, 
calm down, scrabble, 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 and then I put the thing in the bag, and they went, scrabble. And I said, don't worry, exactly, don't worry. I said, stay right here. I, I want to play scrabble with you, but I've got some wandering to do. So if you stay here, just here, right here, stay there, I'll be back. And I had no intention of going back to those, those antelope, ever. You know, it was just one of those things, they gave me the eye, I decided to mess with them this way. So I'm off on my thing, and I'm just wandering through the wilderness, inspecting things. Oh my goodness, this is amazing, fantastic, OMG. It was amazing <laughs> to be out there in the nature. And then the uh, water in, the bot in one of my bottles, I noticed I had two centimeters left, which is a sign that it's time to return. So I turned around. And guess what I saw? Charging at me from three directions, from there, from there, and from there, were three lions screaming their heads off. They get to about here, and they give me the rah, 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 rah. And I just said, shut up. Just shut up. I'm not deaf. I'm not blind. I know you're lions. Don't shout. Then the lion said, oh, we're not shouting. We're roaring. We're lions. We're from the E3 posse. And so they were a posse of lions, teenagers, and... I said, so why are you roaring? They said, because we're going to eat you. I said, are you mad? Are you crazy? Eat a baboon. And they said, I can't catch a baboon. So I said, eat a warthog. They said, a warthog is too fast. So I said, well, eat a buffalo. There's a lot of meat on the buffalo. And they said, the buffalo beats us up. <laughs> we're hungry, and we haven't eaten for almost one and a half sunrises. And that is when my blood turned to Marmite. <laughs> because when a lion has not eaten for longer than one and a half moon, uh, sunrises, you can't talk to it anymore. It's just gone, it, you, it's, it's lost its mind. So I've got these three young lions here, teenagers, so you know how teenagers are. They don't always listen. And I realize it's a matter of life and death. Something, I have to think of something. And I must tell you, I came up with an idea that the only way to describe it is of the purest genius, okay? <laughs> I said to the lions, and this is something you have to know, when dealing with lions, it's always about confidence. <laughs> Do not, don't shiver, it doesn't matter. They make a lot of noise, but just, just be confident. So I said to the lions, I said, have you ever eaten a human being before? I said, nah, nah, you're the first one. And it's gonna be brilliant, like eating in a 15-star restaurant. I said, ha ha, 15 star restaurant. Suddenly I came up with an extra part of my plan. Because I said to the lions, but you can't go to a 15 star restaurant with your hair looking like that. And it's true, the hair was all ragged, you know? <laughs> They'd been thrown out of the pride, their mums weren't looking after their hair anymore, they were all looking very rough. And they knew they couldn't dine on me looking like that. And so just before that teenage depression set in, I said, fellas, you are in luck. And I brought out the three jars of coconut oil and the garden comb. I said, it's time for a grooming, isn't it? And they said, yeah, we want a grooming, we want a grooming. So I took the one, you know, one by one. And the clue here is that when you're working on a lion's hair, you begin at the scalp. You sort of like massage, you know, and then let the moisture come out. It's really important. So I finished grooming these lions in about 15 minutes, and they looked like the Bee Gees. I have to say. <laughs> they looked like the Bee Gees. And they were so excited, they were just running around, E3 Posse looking marvelous, E3 Posse looking marvelous. And that's when I entered phase two of my, I don't want to be eaten by a lion plant. So I said, hey, guys, how many legs are here? Now this is a very, very risky maneuver. <laughs> it's very risky because the minute I said legs, the lions are all going rawr, 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 because as we all know, the favorite part of anything a lion eats are the legs. You know, the lions love legs so much. Um, I guess the best way to say it is, imagine if Father Christmas was Bruce Lee, right? So Father Christmas is Bruce Lee, that's how much lions love legs. <laughs> so the lions were there slobbering away. And again, what I told you about confidence, so I knew that if I left it too long, they'd attack me. So I said, will you stop that slobbering and answer the question, how many legs? And they all like this. And they said, two. I said, yes. And I said, how many members are there of the E3 lion posse? They said, three. I said, that means one lion 
will have this leg. Another line will have this leg. And a third line will not have a leg at all. So how does that make you feel? Now, you know how teenagers can be one minute an adult and the next minute they're a baby? Well, that's how it was with these lions. They just began to cry and weep. It was terrible because they're very noisy. They cry. I mean, they're crying, but they're very, very noisy. So I let them cry for about five minutes. And I said, OK, guys, guys, listen to this. Supposing I tell you you can have a leg bonanza. They just stopped and they looked at me. They said, what? I said, yes, a Bruce Lee Christmas leg bonanza. <laughs> Supposing I guarantee that. And they said, tell us, tell us, tell us. And I said, come, come, come. And so I told them about my Scrabble board. And I told them about the antelope that I'd seen. And suddenly they're up and now shouting, leggy, 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 leggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it went on about 15 minutes. It was hard to control them. They're teenagers. I said, keep quiet. You have to listen to the plan. It took ages and ages. Eventually, they listened to the plan. I said, the plan is this, right? Da, 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 da. And don't make an appearance until the fourth game of Scrabble. All right. So I go back. I change my plans. I go back to the antelopes who are waiting for me. And I'm there with the Scrabble board. And I sit down in this sort of clearing. And there are like hundreds, there are thousands, may maybe millions, actually, probably millions of antelope all around us. <laughs> and I let them win the first games, you know, so it gives them some confidence. The second day, the second game, I won. I cheated, yes, but I still won. <laughs> the third game, they overtook me, and they thought, let's do one more. Now, so we sat down and got ready for the fourth game. I would like to tell you, I'd like to describe what happened in what is now known as the fourth game of Scrabble Massacre. <laughs> but I, I, can't, I, I can't do that, I can't do that, because half of you will run screaming and the other half will throw your shoes at my head, and I don't want that to happen again. Okay. What I can tell you is this. The E3 lion posse gorged on legs for about a week. They became very strong, healthy lions, and the last I heard, they had won Posse of the Season Award for the fifth year in succession. That's outstanding work, outstanding work from those lions. As for the antelopes, well, when word got around uh, about what had happened, they swore, antelopes around the whole world swore never, ever, 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 to touch a game of Scrabble again. And I, I can see some of your eyes saying, yeah, he's just standing there, it's the Mezrab, and we talk about this stuff. Fair enough. Well, let, no, wait, 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 we're not there yet. I suggest any of you here today, who now have this new wisdom. Get a Scrabble board, it doesn't have to be new. It could be from your mom, could be from your uncle, could be anyone, it could be from friends. Go to the zoo, see the antelopes, wave that Scrabble board in front of them and see what happens. <laughs> and that is really all I have to say about this. So thank you very much.